Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Um, a big hello and welcome. This is our first webinar of 2023. We did take a little bit of a, a break in December just to enjoy the holidays. So a belated Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you had an amazing time. Um, we are back now and we have so many cool webinars lined up for you guys this year. And we're starting out with a really good one. Top 20 Excel efficiency hacks to improve productivity. Now, before we dive into what we're going to cover today, I'll just quickly introduce myself to those of you who might be new to our webinars. I know we always get a lot of regulars, but occasionally we do get the odd new person. So my name is Deborah Ashby and I'm a Microsoft IT trainer. I've been a, a trainer for about 16 years now and I've worked in the wider IT industry for about 27 years. So I've pretty much seen Excel evolve from a fairly basic application in the 1990s to the very complex product that it is today. And as most of you most of you know who use Excel, there's so much that we can do with it. And the idea for this webinar really came from some Excel tips that I've been posting recently on TikTok of all places. And what I'm finding is that the most popular videos that I post tend to be the ones where I just show like a cool little keyboard shortcut or something that really helps us just work more efficiently in Excel. So it's not really those big hitting topics. It's not really things like VLOOKUP or IF statements or pivot tables or anything like that. It's those little things that make our our lives easier. So I thought it'd be quite a nice idea just to combine some of my favorite efficiency hacks into a webinar so that you can start maximizing your productivity and saving yourself some time. Now, as I mentioned, just a tiny little bit of housekeeping. The chat panel is open for you all to post comments, talk to each other throughout the session. Unfortunately, because I'm in this managing this webinar on my own, I can't actually see the chat panel when I'm sharing my screen. So if you're asking me questions, I can't actually see them when we're in the session. So what I always say is if you do have a question, just note it down because I do leave some time at the end where you can ask all your questions and we can run through uh, anything that you want to run through. So just be aware of that. I can't actually see what you're typing. <laughs> Um, and the other thing is this session is being recorded. That's always the most popular question I get. Is it being recorded? Yes, it is. You will receive a link to the recording of this webinar. I think it goes out. I think they send it out in the, the newsletter, which I think most of you are subscribed to. Um, if you've signed up, whatever email address you've used to sign up, you'll get a link uh, sent to that email address. I'm not exactly sure when that is, whether it's the next few days, I'm not sure, but you will get a copy of this recording. So with all that said, let's take a look at today's agenda. So we're going to go through quite a lot of different tips. Now, there's no real logic to this session. It's not like we're starting with a topic like pivot tables and working our way through it. These are just random tips which are a little bit all over the place. So we're kind of be jumping around everywhere with this. Some of these tips you might already know. I'm hoping that there's enough in here that you will find at least something or maybe even a few things that you didn't know before that's going to be really useful to you. So we're going to start out with some basic work with columns and rows. So doing things like quickly resizing columns and rows, quickly inserting multiple columns and rows, things like that. We're going to talk a lot about fill series and flash fill. Flash fill is what I like to call the superhero of Excel. It is such a good thing. And if you never used it before, then this is going to be a complete game changer for you. It's probably my favorite efficiency tip. So we're going to take a look at flash fill. I'm also going to show you some things that you can do with fill series. We're going to take a look at alt keyboard shortcuts. If you're not sure what those are, you'll see when we get to them. I'm going to show you some tricks when it comes to quickly summing things, particularly when you're summing totals across different worksheets. And we're going to talk about the brilliance of Excel tables. Again, another one of my favorite things in Excel. I'm going to show you a couple of things when it comes to customizing your quick access toolbar to make your commands really easy to find. And we're going to do a cool little trick. I, I've included this because I posted it, as I said, again, on TikTok the other day. And this video was so popular. So I figured that people quite like this little hack. So I'm going to show you how you can basically use Excel to create folders and subfolders in File Explorer. It's a really cool little trick. So I'm looking forward to showing you that one. 
As I said, inserting multiple columns and rows, I'm going to show you the quick analysis tool in Excel if you want to create uh, very quickly things like charts and tables, things like that. I'm going to show you a little trick for inserting blank rows between list items if you ever need to do that. And we're going to take a look at a few little data cleaning things as well. So I'm going to show you how you can very efficiently remove blank rows from a data set, how you can do things like fill blank cells and also change the case quickly and remove leading and trailing spaces. We'll take a look at how we can quickly remove line breaks and non-printing characters from a data set and also how we can create in-cell charts. I'm going to show you how you can analyze trends with spark lines. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a little hack with the status bar and we're also going to finish up by talking about merging cells because merging cells is something that you should never do in Excel and I'm going to show you why and I'm going to show you an alternative. So these are all of the things which I plan to show you. As I said, there's quite a lot in here. We are going to be jumping around a little bit all over the place. So let's start out. I'm just going to open up the same file that I just sent you guys. So let's open this up. All right, so we're going to start on this first worksheet. We've got a lot of worksheets in this session, so make sure that you're on the auto fit worksheet. Now, this might be a tip that you're already familiar with, but there are so many people who I come across who don't know that this exists. And what I see is if you have a data set like this, notice that this data set is a little bit of a mess. We have all of our rows are kind of bunched up. Some of them are kind of cutting off. And we also have our columns. So you can see here in these columns F, G and H, I have these little hash symbols. It basically means the column's not wide enough for the data that I have in it. Now, what I see people doing, and this is very tedious, particularly if you have a large data set, is to resize all of these columns. They kind of grab the column and they drag it out and they grab the next one and they drag it out. And if you've got a lot of columns, this can take a little bit of time. So there is a much easier way to do this. Now, if you have both columns and rows that you need to resize, all you need to do is select everything on the worksheet. And you can do that in a couple of ways. You can press Control A, or you can click in this little square in the corner where in between A and 1. If I click that, that's going to select everything in the worksheet as well. And then all you need to do to automatically resize all of the columns is simply hover your mouse over any of the dividers in between each column. So you can see my mouse has changed or my cursor has changed to so that little double headed arrow. If I double click, it's going to automatically adjust all of those column widths to the widest item in that column. We can do exactly the same for rows. So if we hover our mouse over any of these row boundaries and double click the mouse, it's going to resize those rows. So, so much quicker than individually adjusting them. Now, just to note that little trick there, that little double uh, double click trick is basically just doing an auto fit. So another way that you could do this is if you have everything selected, on the home ribbon. If you go into the format drop down, you could choose auto fit row height and auto fit column width. That will do exactly the same, but I generally tend to find that the double clicking is quicker. Okay, so that is the first little trick. You may or may not have known that. Let's move across to one of my favorite things, as I mentioned, flash fill. Now, if you haven't used Flash Fill, and I will say this isn't available in all versions of Excel, I think they introduced Flash Fill in Excel 2013. So if you have anything after that, then you should have Flash Fill. Now, why is Flash Fill so brilliant? Well, it takes all of the stress out of breaking up data across multiple columns. So let's take a look at the first example here. I have in column A just some full addresses. And you can see we have the street number, the street name, the state, and the zip code. And maybe my manager has asked me to break this full address up because if we're going to analyze this data, having all of this data in one cell isn't so great if we want to analyze. So it's much better if we have each item in its own column. Now, if I have a very long list, I only have a short list here, but maybe I've got 20,000 rows of addresses and I need to break each one up to do this manually would take me forever. But fortunately, we have Flash Fill, which can help us do this. Now, the way that Flash Fill works is it recognizes patterns of data. So you basically need to tell Flash Fill what the pattern is and then it can work out the rest. 
So you can see in the first row here, I've broken up this first address. So we have the street number, we have the street name, the state and the zip code. So I've provided Excel with the first example and then check out how quick this is. All we need to do is click in the first one, the street number and press the keyboard shortcut control E and it's going to extract all of those street numbers. Move to the next one, control E, move to the state, control E, move to the zip code, control E, and we are done. We can then use our little trick that we just learned. We can double click to make everything the correct width. How much quicker is that than having to mess around with text functions, left, right, things like that to extract text out of a cell? So flash fill, amazing for doing anything like that. We can also do it for if we want to do things like change case or uh, just split up first names and last names. So if I wanted to maybe change the case of all of these, I could simply, again, just type in how I want it to look. So again, I'm providing Excel with the pattern. So maybe I want these to be in uppercase and then I can simply either control E or alternatively, if you prefer to use flash fill from the ribbons, we can jump up to the data tab and you'll find the flash fill button in the data tools group. It's this one just here. And you can click just to flash fill both of those down. So amazing at doing anything like that. Now, another way that you can use this is if maybe my boss says to me, OK, we have all of our employee names just here in column K, I want you to output their email addresses into here. So maybe everybody works for the same company and they have the same email format. So all I would need to do is let's say that the email format is willard.spot at company.com. Let's just say that is the format. I can then use flash fill and it will do exactly the same for the rest of these names. Now, I could use control E. I could click on the button on the ribbon, but there is a third way that we can invoke flash fill. And that is we can simply go to the cell underneath and we can start to type the next one. And notice what happens. It goes sit down. And if this is what we want, we simply need to press enter. If we decide we don't want to copy this down, we can press escape. So if I press enter, it now completely fills down all of those email addresses. So flash fill, one of my favorite things in Excel, and you can use it in so many more situations than I've shown you here. If you want to split up data, change the case. If you want to add things into data, you can use flash fill. Just provide the pattern, control E, and you're done. Such an amazing little utility. Now, while we're on this page, another thing that I want to show you, actually, let's go to the AutoFit page just here. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about alt keyboard shortcuts. Now, most people, when we think about working efficiently in Excel, we think a lot about using shortcuts instead of using our mouse to move around the screen. And what you'll find, particularly if you watch a lot of Excel videos on platforms like TikTok, you'll find a lot of the Excel trainers on there basically move around Excel using entirely alt keyboard shortcuts. Now, what do I mean by alt keyboard shortcuts? Well, if you press the Alt key on your keyboard, notice what happens to my ribbons. Can you see that I now have those little key tips appearing underneath the ribbons and on various different commands? So we can now use these letters to move to the different ribbons and select things. So it means that we don't have to use our mouse at all, really. We can work predominantly with the keyboard. So, for example, this data that I have on this worksheet is in a table. It's in an Excel table. Now, what about if I wanted to take this data out of this table? Well, I could use keyboard shortcuts in order to do that. So I want to go to the table design ribbon. So notice that underneath table design at the top, we have JT underneath it. So if I press JT, it's going to jump me to that table design ribbon and give me a whole new set of shortcuts that I can use. So now all I need to do is find the option that says convert to range. I can see it in the tools group just there. And if I press G, it's going to convert the table to a range. I can then hit enter to press yes. And I haven't had to touch my mouse once. So a lot of people really love these old keyboard chic shortcuts just to move between and select different options. If you have all these shortcuts up on the ribbon and you want to come out of this mode, just press escape and it will take you back to how it was. 
Okay, so don't forget about those little alt keyboard shortcuts. They can be super useful. Let's move across to the auto sum worksheet. Now, again, this is a little tip that you might know, you might not. But I see people doing this. Some people sort of do this half right. Other people um, don't know about this at all. So this is a keyboard shortcut to just very quickly sum things on a worksheet. Now, it might be that you know what this keyboard shortcut is, but do you know that you can use it just to sum multiple um, items from multiple tables? So I've got four different sales tables on here for sales team one, two, three, and four. And I need to basically fill in the totals for each of these. So instead of doing these all individually, what I can do is I can select the first table and I want to include that blank total column, hold down control, select the second table, keep control held down as I'm making these selections. And then I can just use the auto sum keyboard shortcut, which is alt equals, and it's going to magically put those totals in for all of my selections. So you're not just limited to using it once, you can make your selection alt equals and it will do them all in one go. Now this also works if you have your data split across different spreadsheets. So at the bottom here, I've got four spreadsheets and they're all colored in yellow, sales team one, sales team two, sales team three, and sales team four. And what I have on each of these, I've just separated out this data. So we have sales team one here, sales team two, three, and four. So if I wanted to sum all of these across the different spreadsheets, all I need to do are select the spreadsheets first of all. So I'm clicked on sales team one, if I hold down shift and click sales team four, it's going to select all of the worksheets in between. And then all I need to do is do it for one of these. So I can select and press alt equals, and it's going to complete those totals across all of the different worksheets. So the key there is just to simply select the worksheets first, then do the all equals and it will apply to everything. Now, just a side note, that works for formatting as well. So if you have the same data on different worksheets, maybe or similar data, it's maybe displaying different uh, values, but the same kind of structure like I have here, you could do that if you wanted to apply the same formatting across all of them, you could select all the worksheets, you could change the formatting and it will change across all of them. So a really useful little trick to know. Let's move on to talking about one of my favorite subjects, and that is Excel tables. So I'm working on the tables uh, worksheet right now. Now, Excel tables, why are they one of my most favorite things? Well, they are so useful, particularly if you like everything in your worksheets to be dynamic. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when we talk about um, making things dynamic in Excel, it means that they're easy to update. We don't have to do a lot of fiddling around. We just need to add in our new data and then whatever's hanging off of it, maybe a chart or something else will automatically update. And tables are one of the best ways that you can make your data dynamic. Now, currently, I have this little data set here. Let's just say there's some sales agents and these are their sales totals for Q1 to Q4. Now, currently, my data isn't in a table. So I'm going to show you an example of what happens when you don't put your data in a table, and then we'll take a look at the benefits of tables. So maybe I have this small data set and I want to create a little chart to represent these values. So I'm going to click in my data set. Let's jump up to the insert tab. And in the charts group, I'm just going to enter a basic 2D column chart to represent this data. Now that's all well and good. I can see my agents running across the bottom. I can see the totals. We're looking good so far. But what about if we have another sales agent to add to the bottom of this list? So I'm going to use myself as an example. Let's add me to the bottom. And I've got my sales figures in here. Let's say I've done really well. But check out what's happening. The chart isn't updating, even though I've added a new piece of data. And we can see that if we click on the chart, notice that the range that the chart is using is actually highlighted in my data set. So you can see that it's not including anything that I'm going to add onto the bottom. So if I was adding agents in here, what I could do is I could drag the bottom of this down and it then includes it. But what about if I don't want to do that? Or maybe I don't realize that that's what I have to do. Well, a better way of doing this would be to put your data into a chart instead.
So I'm just going to delete that out and I'm going to put this data set into a table. Now, a quick way of creating a table, and I would recommend that if you, any data that you have, I would recommend that you put it in a table, particularly if you're going to analyze it. So a quick shortcut for putting data into a table is simply control T. You can see it's picked up everything around where I'm clicked. Very important, if your table has headers, make sure you have this tick just here. Click on OK, and I get my data in a table. Now, remember, it's going to apply the default table style, the colors for the theme that you're using. So if you don't like these, you can go to table styles and just change it to something um, a little less crazy. So I think I'm going to go for this turquoise color. Now, another thing I always recommend you do once you've put your data in a table is give your table a name because by default, when you put data into an Excel table, Excel is going to give it a very generic name. So it's going to be table one, table two, table three. So that makes your table quite hard to identify, particularly if you want to start using your table names in formulas and things like that. So if we take a look at the table design ribbon, we can actually see the table name in the first properties group just here. So table one, the default name. So I'm going to give this, let's just call this, um, let's call it sales data. Now, one thing to note with your table names is that you can't have any spaces in the table name. So if you've got two words like I have here, you need to make them all one word or maybe separate the words with something like an underscore. Let's press enter. So now I've named my table. Let's create our chart again and see what happens this time when we add something new. So I'm going to create the same chart, the 2D column chart. But now, as soon as I start to type the next one, notice it's already made room in the chart for the new data. And I can then add that in because charts are made to auto expand. So they will accommodate any new data that you add into the table. And this is great, not only for things like charts, it means you don't have to mess around adjusting those cell ranges, but also for formulas as well. So let me just show you what I mean um, by formulas. I'm going to delete out this chart. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab these names over here. Let's control C and just put them over here. And I didn't want to bring that formatting with me, but that's fine for the example that we're doing. I'm going to just copy and paste these. So essentially, we have duplicate names in this list. I just really want to show you the benefits of putting this list into a table. Now, I'm going to add a little title at the top here. Let's say agent and make it bold. Now, if I don't put this into a list and I create a formula based off of this list, so I'm going to use a unique formula. And this is one of the newer functions in Excel. It will basically output a unique list of values into your worksheet. So because these names are repeated in this agent column, if I just want a unique list of all of the sales agents, I can select the array, close the bracket, hit enter, and it's going to give me a unique list. Now, if I were to add more people onto the bottom here, because I've selected the cell range I4 to I17, it's not going to include them in my unique list. But if I put this into a table, it will include them. So it helps you with your formulas as well. So let's do control T. Yes, my table has headers. So now if I was to do the unique function and I can select all of the names in this list. Now notice when we're using tables, we get the table references in the formula instead of cell references. So I have table two and it's telling me I'm using the agent column. OK, now this is why it's quite important to name your tables, because I didn't name this little table just here. So we just have the generic name table two. Now, that might be fine, but sometimes it's a lot easier to identify them if you actually name them. So I'm going to close the bracket. Oops, hit enter. It's going to give me the same thing. But if I add another person onto the bottom, that table is going to expand and my list is going to update. OK, so the benefits of putting things into tables is it just makes everything more dynamic and you can update things a lot more quickly. So Excel tables, one of my biggest tips. 
Let's move across to talking about the quick access toolbar. Now, again, this might be something that you're already aware of. I'm always surprised how many people don't know why this exists. But if you're not familiar with the quick access toolbar, it's basically this little thing that we have just here. So just above the formula bar and underneath the ribbons, you can see I have a few icons. I have the save, I have undo and I have redo. This is your quick access toolbar. And you can click the little drop down arrow and you can customize where you want this toolbar to be. So I like to have mine under the ribbon, but you could choose to show this above the ribbon, which kind of puts it up here out of the way in the title bar. Now, I don't have mine up there because I always forget it's there if I don't have it below the ribbon. And the purpose of this quick access toolbar is really to allow you to access commands that you use frequently quickly. So instead of hunting through ribbons looking for specific commands, you can add whatever you like to this quick access toolbar. So if I go to the insert tab, maybe I want to add recommended charts to my quick access toolbar. I can right click and choose add to quick access. And you can see this icon just here is now recommended charts. And this is going to stay here until I choose to right click and remove it from that quick access toolbar. So you can really go through and you can add whatever you like simply by right clicking and adding to the quick access toolbar. Now, another thing that you can do with this is you can click the drop down. And if we jump into more commands, this is going to jump us across to our Excel options and into the quick access toolbar area. And if you take a look over on the right hand side, you can see all of the commands that I currently have on the quick access toolbar. Now, from here, I can do things like rearrange the order. So maybe I want print titles a bit further up. I can use my arrows at the side to really rearrange where I want these to be. I can just click up and down. I can also add things like separators to give that quick access toolbar a little bit more structure and organization. So on the left hand side, this is where we can choose what commands we want to add to our quick access toolbar. So you can do it from here as well. So if I was to choose all commands, wait a few seconds, every single command available in Excel is now listed in this big long list. Remember, not every command that's available is actually on a ribbon. So if you can't find the command that you want to add, maybe 3D map, you could select it from here, click on the add button to add it to the quick access toolbar. And at the top of every single list, we have this separator item just here. So if I add to separators, I can then use these and move them into position to add a little bit of structure to my quick access toolbar. I can basically position them wherever I like. And then when I click on OK, if you take a look at my quick access toolbar now, you can see these faint lines there just separating different groups of commands. So maybe you want to separate out commands that are related to give that quick access toolbar a little bit more structure. So I highly recommend that you customize that QAT, as we call it, with all of the commands that you use frequently so you're not hunting through the ribbons looking for what you need. Let's move across to talking about fill series. I'm just going to take a quick swig of drink because my mouth is very dry today. Oh, that's a little bit better. A nice cup of tea in the evening. All right, let's talk about fill series, because again, this is something which I find myself doing pretty frequently. And before I knew how to do this, it was a very tedious, tedious task. So, for example, if we take a look in this first little table, I've basically got some dates in here. And if I press control down arrow to jump all the way to the bottom of this list, you can see it runs to the end of 2023. So 31st of December 2023. Yes, I have my dates in US format for anybody from Europe or Australia <laughs> who's on the call today. I always get a lot of hassle because I have my Excel set to US format. I know it's very confusing, but I think the majority of the people on the call today are from the US. So this is probably going to make sense to you. So I've got my dates here. I have some, I've extracted the, the day, the month and the year. But the main point of this exercise is maybe I just want to number one to 365. And this might be anything that you want to number. It doesn't necessarily have to be days of the year. Anytime you want to number things in your Excel spreadsheet, there is a slow way to do this and there is a quick way to do this. So you could go one, two, three, you know, you could do that 
that's going to take you forever if you want to do 365 days. Another way that you could do this is you could type in one, two, then you could select both of them and then use the fill handle and start dragging down. But this is still a pretty slow method if I want to go all the way down to 365. So there is a better way of doing this. All you need to do is type number one. And then if you hold down, when we have this little uh, fill handle just here, hold down the right mouse button, not the left. Hold down the right, drag down one, drag up, and you get this little secret menu. What we can then do is go to series and we can say we want to fill down the column. I want it to uh, step up one each time and I want it to stop at 365. And when you click on OK, it's automatically going to fill in all of those numbers for you. So a really cool little trick. Once again, I know a lot of people get confused by that. You hold down the right, you drag down, you drag back up, and then it shows you that menu. Now, another way that you can do this, and this is for people who have um, Excel for Microsoft 365, there is a function called sequence that you can also use to number items in your list. So let me just quickly show you that. Control shift down arrow, I'm going to delete out everything. We can use sequence to do exactly the same thing. So if we type in equals sequence, what we can do here is we can tell Excel how many rows we want. So I want 365 rows. How many columns? Well, I only want one column. What number do I want to start at? I want to start at number one. And what number or what is the step value? So I want it to go up by one each time. So we just need a one there as well. Close the bracket, hit enter. And that's going to do exactly the same thing, but we're using a formula. OK, so a few different methods there when it comes to numbering things really quickly. Really helpful if you have to number 100,000 rows. Now, another thing that we can use fill series for, if we take a look at the second example where I have this little table, I've got some three names at the top, Claire, Mark and Taylor. And maybe I'm trying to put together a little table that shows when these people work. So what I want down in this column are only the working day. So I don't want it to include any day that is Saturday or Sunday because these people don't work on those days. Well, this is where we can use fill series again. So what we can do here is we can uh, right click the mouse, go down one, go up one, let go. And no, sorry, let me do that again. <laughs> what I'm going to do first, so I'm just going to take this first date just here and I'm just going to copy it down like so. Now, this is going to just show consecutive dates. It's not going to exclude the weekday, the weekend dates. But notice that as soon as I copy this down right at the bottom, I get this little tag just here, some autofill options. And if I click it, I then get a choice of what I want to fill these dates with. So I don't have to fill them consecutively. I can choose to fill just the weekdays or just the months or just the years. So I'm going to say fill weekdays. It's going to adjust those and it's going to exclude any dates that fall on a Saturday or Sunday. So if you take a look just here, you can see we jump from the 6th of January to the 9th of January. So I'm going to assume that the days in between the 7th and 8th are the Saturday and the Sunday. So don't forget about this little autofill options at the bottom. It's really great if you need to fill dates and other things in different ways to just sequentially. So now I have that, what I might want to do here is add some little checkboxes in so I can just add a little checkbox whenever these people are working. And again, this is another little tip that I find um, people don't realize is there, but can be useful in so many different scenarios. I love to have things like checklists in Excel, whether it's a to do list that I'm creating or something along those lines. So let me show you how you can add really useful little checkboxes in here, too. Now, you find checkboxes on the developer ribbon. Now, one thing you have to remember is that the developer ribbon isn't available, um, sorry, isn't uh, displayed by default in Excel. You have to turn it on. So if you're looking at your Excel currently and thinking, I don't have the developer ribbon, all you need to do is go to file and open up options. And if we go to customize ribbon, 
On the right hand side, just make sure that where we have the developer ribbon just here, you have a check in this box. If you can't see it, it's going to be just because this is deselected. So check it off, click on OK, and then you should be able to see this ribbon. So now if I want to add a little checkbox to denote when these people were working into every single one of these cells, I can simply go to the controls group and I can insert this checkbox form control. I'm just going to click and I can then position it wherever I like. And this can be a little bit tricky. Now, I don't want it to say checkbox. I want it to say nothing. So I'm just going to delete out that text. And once I have one checkbox in here, I'd probably take some time to position this more in the center. But just for time's sake, I can simply use autofill to drag it down and I can drag it across. And I've created myself a whole bunch of checkboxes and I can now say, OK, these people are working on these days. As I said, I use these checkboxes a lot for things like to do lists. So a couple of little tricks and tips in there when it comes to filling uh, dates and numbers down and also using form controls. Now, the next little tip is one that I only learned very recently. And I thought it was really cool. I did a little video about this. I, in fact, I've done two videos on this on TikTok and they've been really, really popular. So I thought I would include it um, because this might be something that you find really useful. Now, I'm going to use Excel to create folders in File Explorer. So how might this scenario come up? Well, it might be that maybe you have a list of clients in a spreadsheet and you're doing lots of work for those clients and you want to create a folder in File Explorer that's the client's name and you want to be able to save all of your work for individual clients into File Explorer. If you already have your clients listed out in an Excel spreadsheet, you can simply use them to create the folders automatically. So let me show you what I mean. I have a small list of clients just here. Some of these uh, might be reasonably familiar to you. And maybe I work for these clients and I want to create a folder in File Explorer for each of these. So, of course, I could do this the manual way. So if we open up File Explorer and I've got a clients folder just here, I could go into File Explorer, new folder, create the folder, create the next one, so on and so forth. Now, that's the slow way of doing it. What I could do is I could simply add onto the front of here MD. I'm going to drag this down. And then I'm going to copy the MD and the name of the folder, Control C, and we're going to paste them into Notepad. So I already have Notepad open just here. Control V to paste. And then all we need to do is save this into the folder where we want to create these folders. So I'm going to save these into, uh, let's go back, hang on one second. I'm going to save these into, I should have put this on my desktop to make it a little bit easier. The clients folder just here. So navigate to the folder where you want these folders to be created. And then you just need to make sure that you save your, uh, your notepad file with a dot bat file extension. This is a little batch file that we're running. So when we click on save, all we then need to do is run that batch file and it's going to create all of those folders like magic. OK, now we can also use this to create subfolders as well. We can use the same method. So if I wanted to create subfolders as well, I would just need to add into here backslash and then whatever the subfolders name wants to be. So I might have documents here. I might have backslash images and I can have more than one. So maybe something like that. So you could create the structure. Again, you would just copy and paste into a notepad file, save it as a .bat file extension and then run it and it will create all of the folders and the subfolders for you. So a really cool little tip, if you have to create lots of folders in one go, you can use Excel to help you with that. So I'm going to be interested at the end to see what you thought of that little tip <laughs> when I can see the chat panel. <laughs> All right. Now, another quick little tip. I'm going to jump back to this auto fit um, worksheet just here for this one, because I want to show you something. Again, this is really simple, but I'm always surprised as to how many people don't realize this is how you do this. 
inserting multiple columns or rows into your spreadsheet. Now, if you're somebody who, if they need to insert new columns, kind of selects one, right click, insert, right click, insert, that's very slow. Maybe you're somebody who uses a keyboard shortcut. So we can say control shift plus to insert new columns. Both of those methods are valid. But what if I want to insert more than one column at a time? Maybe I want to insert three columns in one go. Well, all you need to do is select three columns in your data set, and then you can press control shift plus, and you're going to get three columns. So however many columns you want to insert, just make sure you select that number first of all. And it works the same with rows. So if I want to select a whole bunch of rows, instead of doing it manually and individually, I can just select them all, control shift plus, and I'm going to get that number of new blank rows. Okay, so again, a little tip that I find really useful that I find a lot of people don't actually know. All right, let's move across to the quick analysis worksheet. Now, the quick analysis tool is something which you may or may not have noticed when you're selecting data. For example, I've got a little bit of a little data set just here that has some company names. We have the budget for those companies, and then we have the actuals for those companies. Now, maybe I need to create a chart or some kind of table out of this data. Now, what I can do is I can select the data. Now, notice as soon as I do that, I get this little quick analysis tool at the bottom. Now, if we click this, we get a whole host of different things that we can do with this data. So I could very quickly apply some data bars. I could apply a color scale or an icon set. I could go to the charts tab and I could very quickly create a clustered column chart or a stacked bar chart, something like that. Or I could add totals. Lots of different things we can do with this quick analysis. So if I select cluster column, I very quickly have a column representing that data. So it just means I haven't had to waste time going up to insert, then selecting my chart. I can just use that quick analysis button. Also notice there is a keyboard shortcut for that button. If we hover over it, we can see it of control Q that will, pre that will quickly pull that up. Now, another little thing here, I'm just going to remove one of these columns. So let's get rid of the budget. I'm just going to delete that out. Because another thing that I use this all the time for is if I select my data again and click on quick analysis, in this totals area just here, this is a really quick way of just adding some average count, maybe a running total of your data, uh, a percentage of the total, things like that. Now, notice here we have some and then we have some over here. So what's the difference between these two? Well, notice if I hover over sum, it's going to sum downwards. So it's going to sum all of the actuals and put the total at the bottom, which in this scenario, that is what I would want. If I was to choose sum over here, it's going to sum it so that my sum results are in that right hand column. You can see we have a little yellow bar indicating it's going to put those results to the right. So this is useful in some situations. So for example, running totals. If I wanted to create a running total, I don't want my running total to show at the bottom there. So if I scroll across, if I choose running total here, that's the one that's going to be most appropriate because it's going to give me a running total of my data and it's going to put it to the side as opposed to underneath. So again, something that I use all the time. Another one that I use fairly often is if we go back into totals and scroll across, percentage of total is another really useful one. So this is showing me that if I look at this data, company C has 65% of the total sales effectively. So a really quick way of analyzing your data sets. And this really comes into its own when you have a much larger data set than what I have here. So don't forget about that little quick analysis tool that you can access from that little icon. Moving along, let's do a quick time check. These lessons go so quickly. We've got about 15 minutes left or 10 minutes if I allow five minutes for questions. We should be just about OK. Now, again, this is another little trick that um, I actually saw somebody else do this. And I thought, you know what, that, that's really handy if you ever need to do this. Now, again, I have a small data set. I have some employees. I have the department and I have their salary. Now, maybe I need to put 
a blank line in between each of these. Now, sometimes you might have to do something like this. Your boss might want something with a blank line in between each entry in a list. Now, how can we do that quickly without having to do it manually like I've just been doing there? Right click, insert, so on and so forth. Well, let's undo because this is a cool little trick. What I'm going to do is if I do want to insert a blank line in between each row of my data, I'm going to type one and two. And because this is a small data set, I'm just going to select them both and drag this down. So we now have numbers here. I'm going to copy them, control C, and I'm simply going to paste them underneath control V. Now what I'm going to do, and this is where the magic happens, is I'm going to make sure I'm clicked in this column. I'm going to go to data and we're going to click on sort. And what we're going to do is we're going to sort on the values in column E. We're going to sort them smart, smallest to largest. So what that's going to do, it's going to put all the ones together, all the twos together, all the threes, so on and so forth. And effectively, what you get when we delete this column out is we get a blank row in between each item because of the way that we've sorted. If you wanted two blank rows, you would just need to copy the numbers um, one more time, depending on how many rows you want in between. So I thought that was a cool little hack because I have had to do this previously and it takes ages if you've got a very large data set. So a nice little hack just there. Now, moving across, just a couple of things when it comes to cleaning up data sets, because again, this is something that so many people have to do. A lot of the time now we're working with larger and larger data sets. You know, there's very much an emphasis on analyzing data. Everybody's analyzing data. We're putting our data into charts and pivot tables. We're creating dashboards. And none of that is any good if you start out with a data set that isn't clean. And what we mean by clean is we mean that we've removed things like blank rows. We've removed things like duplicate values. We've made sure that all of our data is consistent. So the case is consistent. We have formatting applied, all of those types of things. So I'm just going to show you a couple of little tricks when it comes to tidying up data sets that I think are really useful. Now, this data set, I've kind of, it's very convoluted. I've just kind of messed it up a little bit just to show you how this works. Now, the first thing I would do here is I would use our column uh, trick. So I would select all of the columns in my data set and I would double click to widen these out so I can actually see everything in my data set. Now, if I look at this data set, I have a few issues that I want to address in here. So I can see that I have some blank rows in my data set. And blank rows are never a good thing if you want to analyze data. So we really want to try and remove those. Now, a quick way of doing this is if we select again, all of our columns where our data is contained. Now we can press control G and click on special. Because what we can do from here is we can choose to select all blanks in our selection. So if we click on OK, it's going to find all of those blank rows. And then what we can simply do is we can go to our home tab now that we have them selected and we can delete sheet rows like so. And like magic, they're all gone. So imagine how much quicker that is if you have a data set with 100,000 rows and you've got blank rows scattered throughout. Just select all of the rows, control G, find the blanks and then delete them all in one go. So a really good efficiency tip. Now, another thing that I might want to do in here is I might want to check for duplicates and remove any duplicates. Now, when I say a duplicate, I mean something that is an exact duplicate. So, for example, if I let's take this row just here, maybe I'm just going to copy this and I'm just going to insert it. So now I have an exact copy of this row above. So that was what I would consider to be a duplicate in this data set because my data can have uh, a duplicate region. We have lots of the same region in here. We have lots of the same country. But if every single column is the same, then that is a duplicate that I want to remove. Now, a quick way to remove duplicates, we can jump up to the data tab and we have a remove duplicates button. So in the data tools group, we have remove duplicates just here. I'm going to make sure that Every single piece of data in my columns is a duplicate. And then I'm going to click on OK. It's found my duplicate and removed it. 
So another quick way to get rid of any duplicate values. Now, my little final little tip in here is if we take a look at column B, we have some inconsistencies going on here. So I can see that when I've imported this data set, and you will find if you do import data sets from external systems, they do come across quite messy and you will need to employ a lot of these techniques. Now I can see here, I've got a few things going up. I've got everything in uppercase. I don't want it to be uppercase. I want it to match the rest of my data. I've got some weird spaces going on in some of these, which I want to remove. And also some of these have line breaks in them. So if we take a look here, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, I've got a little line break in there. So I want to use text functions to quickly clean up this data. So what I'm going to do, and this is a really quick way of doing this, is I'm going to insert what I call a helper column, Control Shift Plus to insert a new column. Now, what we can do is combine three text functions and sort all of these issues out in one go. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change the case. Now, it's currently in uppercase. I want to change it to what we call proper case. I'm going to select my text and hit enter. And that's going to change it to proper. Now, if I was to copy this down, it's going to change everything to proper, but it's not going to resolve some of these other issues like this erroneous spacing that we have in there. So let's control Z and go back. What I can do is I can edit the formula and I can use the trim function. And we just need to close off as many as we open. And that's going to get rid of those spaces. So you can see now that looks a lot neater. Now, if you want to get rid of things like line breaks or maybe non-printing characters that have crept into your data, we can also add clean onto the front here. And again, we just want to make sure we close that off. So I'm combining three functions together, which will essentially perform three cleaning exercises on my data. And we are done. So once we have this nice and clean, I then want to get rid of this column, column B. Now, if I was to right click and just delete this out, I'm going to get some reference errors because this data is using formulas that refer to column B. So another little trick that I use all the time is paste values. If we select column C, control C to copy, I'm going to go to home and I'm going to choose to paste the values only. Because what that will do is it will keep what you can see, but it's going to throw away these underlying formulas and then you can safely delete out that dirty column and you have your nice clean column. So a few little tricks there that I like to use when I'm cleaning up data. The final thing I would do here if I was going to analyze this data is control T. We've already seen this and put my data into a table and I'm pretty much ready to go. Final couple of little hacks, in-cell charts. Now, this first one is one that very few people seem to know. Now, if we have, as we have here, a list of students and we have their pass marks. Now, if I wanted to represent these pass marks in a little in-cell chart, I could use something like data bars to do that. So again, notice I've got these selected. I can use my quick analysis tool at the bottom and maybe I choose to use data bars to represent those values. Now, the thing with data bars is that it will put them in the same cell that you have the number. I can't put them over here, for example. So if I want to have basically this over here, I can use a slightly different method. So let's control Z to undo. I want the pass mark in here, but I want the little incel chart over here. And I'm going to do this using the rept function, which you might not be aware of. And again, this is a tip that I learned very recently. Now, the text that we want is going to be the pass mark. Sorry, the text that we want to output is going to be a pipe symbol. Now, bear with me on this. There is method to my madness. Now, remember, anytime you have text, you need to put it in quote marks. The number of times I want to repeat this pipe symbol is going to be based on the pass mark in column C. Let's close the bracket and hit enter. And we get this very strange thing. If I copy this down, I'm kind of getting this bar. And for the first one, I'm going to have 50 of them. The next one, 75, so on and so forth. But check out what happens if we select all of these and change our font to Playbill. Look at that. It changes them to an incel chart. 
And the best thing about these is we can format them. We can change the color of these because they are just effectively fonts. Oops, let's change the font color. That would help. And they're also dynamic. So if I was to change this to 30, it's going to update because it's a formula. So now I have my pass mark in one column and also my chart in the next column. So the rept function, really, really useful for doing that type of thing. Another thing that I use all the time when it comes to in-cell charts is sparklines. And sparklines are amazing for representing trends in data. So if we take a look at the next table, we have a list of students and then maybe we have tests that they took every single month of the year for last year. So these are the scores that they achieved in every test that they took each month. And I want to just have a little visual representation of the trend in this last column. Now, a quick way of doing this, we can just simply select all of the data and then I could use my Alt keyboard shortcuts to do this if I wanted to. I can go up to Alt. Let's press Alt. I'm going to insert. Let's go to N and take a look. We have a spark lines group in the middle there. Now, I want to insert a line spark line, which is SL. That's the keyboard shortcut. SL. There we go. Where is my location range? Where do I want these output to? So this is my location range. Let's click on OK and check it out. I get these little trend charts based on the data in my table. If I want to format these, I can. So maybe I want to add uh, markets. So we get these little high points or little points marking every single month. And these are a really nice way of just visually representing data. They make your um, data just look a lot more interesting and a lot more uh, engaging to look at. So in-cell charts are a really nice thing to do. The final little thing that we're going to take a look at here as we are just coming up to 7.30, a couple of little uh, tips and tricks. This little tip is uh, to do with the status bar. Now, the status bar is that thing that runs underneath where you have your worksheet tabs. So it's this little thing down here. Now, did you know that if you right click on your status bar, you have a whole host of stuff that you can customize. And one thing I would always recommend that you do is that you have these turned on. So you have a tick next to average, count, numerical count, minimum, maximum and sum. Because if you have these turned on, what it means is that if you want to quickly find out what the sum, what the average is of a set of a range of cells, you don't have to actually perform the calculation. So if I just select these sales values just here, check out my status bar at the bottom. I can see what the sum is. I can see what the max is. I can see what the average is. And I haven't had to do any formulas. So it's really useful if your boss just says to you, hey, what's the sales totals for the last quarter? You can select it and you can see it down there in the status bar. If you don't have those with a tick next to them, you're not going to see anything down there. So make sure that you do have these ticked. And the very final little Excel hack that I want to show you is related to one of my biggest bugbears in Excel, and that is merging cells. So if you take a look at this data set, you can see here I have a big old merged cell. So for sales rep two, um, we don't have any data. So I've just got NA in here. Now, if I wanted to maybe do a total down here, where I wanted to add up all of the sales above, if I was trying to do a calculation and then I want to select these cells, look what happens when we get to the merge cell. It doesn't let me select just that column of cells because we have a merge cell. So it makes it very difficult to do formulas. So when people merge cells, it always makes me cringe a little bit because there is a much better way to do this where you can get the same effect of a merged cell, but you can still do things like add things up because they're still effectively separate cells. So the first thing we're going to do here, let's just unmerge this cell and show you an alternative way. So in any situation where you might think about merging a cell, instead, select all three cells. We're going to use a keyboard shortcut, Control-1. And we're going to jump across to alignment. And what we want to do in text alignment is we want to choose center across selection instead. So what that's going to do is it's going to give you the same look as if these emerged, but they're still three separate cells. So if I now wanted to do a sum calculation, I can simply select my data like that.
Okay, so never merge cells in an Excel spreadsheet. That is it. Those are all of the tips that I wanted to run through with you guys. Um, thank you so much for joining. I hope you all enjoyed that. I hope you all learn at least one thing that you think is going to help you. Have a great night, a great afternoon, a great morning, wherever you are, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.